Hey guys, in this video we're going to break down some mid-round calling from Astralis and their match against Mouse Sports on Overpass. I have a few rounds I want to break down, but before that, I want to explain the CT side standard setup because understanding it is going to make you a much more effective T side caller. Now, the standard setup to me is basically the setup that you want to have that doesn't involve any gambles and is the best way to effectively guard both bomb sites at the same time. So if we had five players, the setup that you might want to have is two players towards A, two players towards B, and one person floating. Where this person floating, you know, is typically he's your heaven player at the start of the round. Or maybe sometimes, uh, you know, he's going to be towards Khan. This is also kind of your mid player in other maps, right? Maybe you leave him alone at water. This is your floater. The two players at A, these two players at A, they can be playing towards long A, they can be playing towards mid, they can be bathroom. They don't necessarily have to be in the A bomb site. Same thing with the people at B. They don't necessarily have to be in the bomb site. They can be, you know, doubled towards monster. They can also be doubled towards short, right? They're effectively responsible for guarding the B bomb site. Now, understanding this, uh, if we apply it to four players, what it means here is then that we have two players towards A, two players towards B. Both bomb sites are guarded just as effectively. If we had three players alive, we would have one at A, one at B, one maybe floating where he rotates in between the two bomb sites based on what he hears from his teammates. And if we had two players alive, it's basically one at A, one at B. So if we apply this logic, uh, in terms of how our team's going to react. Let's just say, for example, we have two players towards A, two players towards B, one person uh, floating in between. If one of the A players dies, this turns into one. So now uh, the CTs, the setup that they want to get into now, if they only have four players, is they want to get into two and two, right? They want to get into the setup. To make that happen, the floater needs to be able to go back to A to make this two and two, right? So that's just a quick example. And with that, we can continue with the video. This round, we're going to be looking at Astralis' second round buy as they're able to get a bomb plan in the first. They're mostly just going to set up in a basic default here. So we're going to see two players towards B, you know, a couple players towards A, maybe one towards Connector. And the purpose of this round, or this video rather, isn't necessarily to look at what they do at the start of the round, but to look at uh, kind of their reactions to things that happen. So. Mostly Astralis just kind of feeling out what Mel Sports is doing here. And they don't necessarily want to commit into anything too quickly. So they're just feeling out what they can get. Some map control is established from the T's here. And they're also able to get connected at the same time. Now, even if we look at the setup right here from the CTs, we can see that there's two towards A, two towards B. And this is that floater. He's playing towards water. And as Astralis start making their way up and clearing things out, there's actually going to be some contact made towards A. Glaive is going to start working up with Magist to try to potentially kill this A player. And immediately after that happens, Glaive is able to get that kill into Woxic. So now, when this happens, one of the A players goes down. So now there's going to be one at A, two at B, and one floater. For them to get back into that 2-2 two -two setup that I explained earlier, one of these players need to rotate back up towards A. And that's exactly what's going to happen here. So Kerrigan, he's going to start making his way up towards A. They try to force another fight as Magist tries to get a bit more information on the A site. Frozen gets a kill. And at the same time, Chris J gets a kill onto Dupree. Right when that happens as well, Device gets a trade onto Frozen. So now, the setup that we are aware of is that now there's 0 A, 2 towards B, and 1 floater, right? This floater is now going to take the spot at A. This player is going to remain at B, and this player is the floater. So now, the setup with these three players is effectively 1A, 1B, and 1 floating. Now, because Dupree died here towards this monster area, Zipnix is not going to necessarily want to contest that anymore, as the rest of his teammates have established some control at A. So Strauss, they know that this setup is very likely going to be a 1-1-1, one, 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 where one player A, one player B, one player can be floating, and they don't necessarily know where this player floating is. He could, in theory, even be back towards A, or he could be doubling up towards B. Because of this with Zipnix, he is aware that the that he could be in connector, he's aware of this possibility, which is why when you see him going up towards this party area, he's looking very intently at connector, knowing that he could very well be there. And in a moment here, this floater is going to overextend, so Rops, he ends up going down. And so now, there's two CTs remaining. If we look at the C setup of the CTs right now, it's a 1-1. One, one. one player A, one player towards B. Astralis, you know, obviously at higher levels of play, there could be a gamble, which is why they want to reset a little bit to, to, make, to make the CTs fall into this 1-1 one, one setup. So we can still see that, you know, Kerrigan is playing towards A, 
Chris J is still towards B. And then now Astralis are going to set up for the exec towards that A site as in theory with three on one, they should be able to trade out this kill and get the bomb site. After they get that kill, you're going to realize that Glaive, he's going to start running back towards this middle area right away because he realizes this last player was coming from B and there's a very good chance that he'll be rotating up from connector or he's going to go to CT spawn. He decides to choose towards connector and that's why he's going to be looking towards that way right away. So this round's going to be a gun round for both teams. Astralis are going to start off with a simple default, so 2-1-2. Two, two. And in this round, what I want to point out is the value of keeping track of the other team's utility. So in particular, I want to focus on this monster area. So what we're going to see at the start of the round is that there's going to be a, a Molotov used towards short, and as well as a smoke into monster. And this, this monster smoke actually came from CT spawn. Very common smoke. But as that happens, meanwhile, the rest of Astralis is just going to be taking map control towards connector as well as uh, the party area. And what we're going to see in a second here is that there's going to be a second smoke thrown down towards monster. So that's going to be the second smoke of the round. And we can see here that Metal Sports are also doing the 2-1-2, two, two, right? Standard setup, two towards A, two towards B, one person floating. The floater happens to be towards B right now. And as the round pans out, we're going to see a, another smoke from Rops. There's the third smoke of the round towards Monster. With a minute and five left on the clock, Dupree is communicating this to the rest of his team that, hey, you know what? They've already used three smokes, and you definitely want to hit the bomb site that has less util. So we're going to see Glaive is going to start falling back here. We're going to see another player is going to start falling back towards this connector area because with three smokes down already with 53 seconds left, and because if you keep keep in mind, there can only ever be five smokes in the CTs, the fact that three of them have already gone down towards this monster area indicates that this should definitely be the hit for this round. Chris J throws another smoke, so that's going to be the fourth smoke of the round towards monster. So the CTs can only ever have one more smoke at this point, and this smoke is probably very likely towards A. So you can see that Astralis are already setting up towards this B hit. And they're going to go as soon as the smoke phase. You have two players towards connector that are ready to hit towards short. Glaive's going to throw a heaven smoke. Zimnik's going to throw a monster pop. And Dupree, when he get, gets contact towards monster, he actually sees both players. And keeping in mind the, the default setup, there's going to be two towards B, two towards A, and one floater. And this floater actually happens to be towards long A at this point. These players towards short, they're going to try to aggress this as much as possible to try to trade out these these monster players, right? We're going to see that one player device is actually, you know, looking in this direction while the other player tries to handle the person who's going to be rotating, the, the floater, right? They're able to get the, both of the kills towards the monster, and now they have the site in a two-on-two. -two. So the whole point of this round was to illustrate the fact that if you keep track of the other team's utility, you can ha it can give you insight onto... Uh, what, what kind of play you should do because you generally want to hit the sites that have less util and because they use four smokes so early throughout the round it allows Astralis to have an easier site hit. So this next round is going to be a bit of a half buy from most sports and Astralis. They're going to have full weaponry. So what we're going to see from Astralis early on in the round we're going to see one player towards B, three players are going to go towards this long area and one player is going to go towards connector and these three players that long area are going to take long A right away they want to establish that control. And they're able to find a trade onto Woxic. So now a 4-on-4 four -four situation. And when it comes down to these half-buy situations where the other team's half, like half-bought, where they're kind of forced, sometimes they like to do a bit of a gamble. But after getting that kill towards that long A area, uh, essentially the idea that Astralis have is that they want the CTs to kind of reset at this point. right? After finding that kill at long, they're allowing the CTs to reset into different positions. And now what we can see basically is the standard setup of four people alive where you have two players towards A, two to uh, players towards B. So we can see that these two players towards A, now they're set up at A, two players towards B, they're set up towards water, they're actually boosted for the connector peak. But you can see after that Astralis get that kill, they don't necessarily go in on anything right away. They're, they're, they're resetting, waiting for the CTs to regroup into these standard positions. So they're starting to just take things slowly, just trying to poke and prod to see what they can get. Same time Zipnix and Glaive, are, they're going to peek towards Connected at the same time. Glaive gets the kill onto Robs. And now, when that happens, one of these, because 
Originally, it was a 2-2 setup. One of the players goes down at B, so now it's a 1. And once again, Astralis are going to wait and reset, right? Because during this reset, what's happening is that this player is going to stay towards A. This player is going to fall back, uh, back towards the B site after his teammate died. And this player is going to act as a floater as he's going to be rotating. And because he's acting as a floater, you know, he's rotating back towards B. So now we basically have a 1-1-1 one, one, one setup. And Astralis, by resetting and just waiting, they're also holding to see what kind of reaction the CTs do, right? They're constantly trying to funnel the CTs into the setup they want them to be in. And they're putting themselves in a position where they can't get caught off guard because as they're waiting for the reset to happen, if the CTs try to make a play, they're in a better spot to handle it. So right here, as you can see, one of the A players tries to make a play. They try to hunt him down immediately. They get the kill towards bathroom. And as you can see here, Dupree is already waiting for that player to rotate up and he gets that kill as well. So overall, you can see the value of resetting whenever you get a kill because you want the CTs to get into the positions that you want them to be in. And if they happen to not be resetting back in those positions and try to aggress towards you, you'll be in a better spot to handle it. So this round is going to be another gun round. And what I want to highlight here is a tactic that Extralis used to basically bait out the utility of the CTs to make their exec at the end easier to deal with. So essentially what Astralis are doing here right at the start of the round, they're going to use a Molotov for barrel and they don't normally do this. So with this Molotov, it's actually going to bait out the first set of utility from the CTs. They have the Molotov and the smoke as well. The smoke is typically always there, but they have baited out the Molotov. And after they do that, they're going to throw a second Molotov towards this barrel area and what this is essentially done at this point is it's going to bait out another flash it's also going to bait out another smoke so the utility of the CT is just slowly depleting with what they're doing and Astralis because they're basically dictating their utility usage they're keeping track of what they're using and what we're going to see here in a second is that Kerrigan he's going to use another smoke towards monster right so that's a lot of utility that the CTs have already used for a hit that isn't real and Astralis realizes so they're going to go into the setup here where they're going to take towards this B site, knowing that the rest of uh, Mel Sports, their utility is looking really low. And if you just look at Chris J, Kerrigan, and Robs, you know, they only have two flashes left. They don't have any smokes or Molotovs to delay any sort of push. So Strauss, they're going to get ready to do this take. And this is something that I found really interesting. They, do, they throw the pop flash towards Monster. They wait. They don't, they, they don't commit on it. And then they wait for the Mel Sports counter first but then they're in a really good spot to deal with it and that's how they kill Kerrigan here and as soon as that happens, they get the kill, they're gonna start flooding out the smoke for heaven goes through, the flashes and the molotovs try to go through and now this is just a, a much easier sight take for Astralis to handle because they essentially have, have already baited out all the utility of mouse sports by throwing the early molotovs and you can set that up earlier in the half if you just don't throw those molotovs at all and then the one round that you do it, you just fake it so that you bait the utility out Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys liked what you saw, please like and subscribe. And if you have any other ideas for what I should do, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys once again. I'll see you guys in the next one.